Salutations, glad you dropped by to catch our latest episode where the theme to, of today, Under Siege, and not the terrible Steven Seagal movie. Films where characters are isolated in one location and defending themselves from the outside world, which is actually how I describe life. And locked in with us tonight are our brave hosts. We've got Barricade in the left flank. We've got the one who uh, gives the least amount of stars. It's Mr. Cynical himself. It's Deadpan Will. And watching our rear, and not like that, you damn pervs, he's the guy who still holds hope that the new Aliens movie will actually be good. It's AK, It's Ollie, a.k.a. Rapture Reviews. Oh, I'm always watching your rear, PJ. Always. <laughs> I know you are. Um, <laughs> and, and definitely the first to die held up in here. I'm the guy who actually thought I was pretty harsh with uh, rated movies, but it turns out I've given the most amount of stars out of everyone. It's me, it's Shin Rabbit. Okay, we need to get on with the show before the forces from outside manage to get in and I shit my pants. Um, without any further ado, <laughs> we are Night of the Flicks, and this is our feature presentation. <laughs> sounded so genuine uh. <laughs> i butchered that but we got there <laughs> i think funny. you threw me off will to be fair i was just blaming you how it's is just, everybody anyway how's uh, everyone doing yeah <laughs> good S starting on a strong foot today well you know it's always it's good to start the podcast with laughter positivity isn't it yeah <laughs> But anyway, I, you probably heard me bring up the new Alien movie, uh, which I thought we'd start with, because uh, literally, I think about an hour before the podcast, uh, Ollie sent, well, I don't know if he sent, you know, he sent both of us, didn't he? Yeah, yeah I sent you it both, yeah. The trailer to the new Aliens movie, and I was just Alien wondering what Romulus. your... Alien Rom... What is it? Romulus? Romulus. So, apparently, Romulus is going to be the sta space station that it's set on. Ah. Uh. That's but that's that. That's the theory. Theory. Not confirmed. Not, Not confirmed. confirmed. There's a lot, a lot confirmed, but heard it yeah, here I first, mean... folks. Oh yeah. Welcome on board the Romulus. Is it? Um, it's the same director that did the, the Don't Breathe, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Don't Breathe and the Evil Dead remake. Yeah, I think I oh, think I well. think we're in good hands here I'm, I'm i'm excited very very excited I'm a, I'm a complete alien nerd um but i'm really excited about this movie i think um you see i think i've been burnt too many times with alien recently mm. and i just think like i'm skeptical but i will say the trailer did look like it's what i want from an alien movie yeah, they even used the original Alien soundtrack for the for the music through the teaser, so that's got me really pumped. It looks like yeah. they've gone like back to roots kind of thing. It, it's it's what they needed to do, to be fair, and especially if it's going to be set between Alien aliens. Mm. Um, you know, there's a lot of face huggers that seem to mm. be in the trailer as well, and. Also, the, the the main lead looks like she's holding an early version of a pulse rifle, which is the most iconic gun yeah. in cinema history. So, no, I'm I'm really excited. The only thing that kind of worries me that it is technically Disney. Disney's not had a good track record recently, mm. um, but we did get Prey from you know Hulu Predator, um, yeah. which was a really good solid movie. So I've got, I've got really high hopes for this. You see, the thing that I kind of like, I don't like watching trailers anymore. Like I used to, I don't ever watch trailers. I only watched it because you sent it me. But like, I would never go my way to watch a trailer, even if I'm excited for it. Because I just, I feel like I've been burnt so many times with... Oh, definitely. I can see that. Like, yeah. I always remember Last watching... What was the what was the Alien movie that, uh, that came out? Like, I think it's one of the most recent ones. With like... Oh, um, Covenant, yeah. I remember watching the yeah. trailer to Covenant and thinking, oh, they're bringing back, it's going to be aliens, you know, they're yeah. bringing it back. And then I watched it and I was like, I, I left the cinema going, that was shite. <laughs> like, it was like, shite. 
Yeah, that yeah. was really bad. Like, yeah, it but was. I, um... s- I, I still kind of want to see a sequel to that. You know, Ridley Scott's original uh, prequel trilogy. I still want to see how it ends. Yeah. Even though the last one was really bad. But that's just the Alien nerd in me. I'm a, I'm a big. And if, you know, Alien is one of my favourite trilogies. Yeah. I think. I uh, which know, is how you hate movie? Alien 3. Oh, oh, dude, I couldn't, I couldn't say. It's either Alien or Aliens. I, it, it depends what sort of mood I'm in. If I'm in, in the mood for um, action, it's Aliens. If I'm in the mood for a um, haunted, um, hor- um, haunted house horror movie, it's, it's Alien. It, they're, they're two perfect movies in my mm. eyes. Yeah, two, I think they're very different. Two very different yeah. films, considering it's the same franchise and it actually like, it follows on and everything. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just hoping Alien Romulus, because a lot of people, the rumour is that it's going to take very much a Alien Isolation. Um, it's going to yeah. go for that vibe, so they're going to have um, the synthetic Joes in it. Um, even the save points have been teased in it. So, fingers crossed, we're going to have that whole prequel with, say, like Amanda Ripley going into space, looking for her mother, um, which is Ellen Ripley, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, I'm... I'm Probably my expectations are super high for it, so obviously I'm going to have to lower them when mm. the movie comes out. But for me, I'm, I'm I'm excited. From the teaser, I'm really excited. And I don't want to be uh, like pessimistic. Like I don't want to be negative. So I am excited, and I do hope that it's really good. I really hope it is. But I can't help but have that little bit of like, yeah, like you know, I don't want to get, don't want to get over. Yeah. It's understandable. The Alien franchise has had a bit of a rocky history for the last couple of years. Well, last 10 years, decade maybe. Um, but I don't know. I, I really enjoyed Prometheus on multiple watches. Covenant was a bag of crap. Um, but, you know, um, I know you hate Alien 3, Shin, but, you know, Alien 3, I, I still think it's a solid movie. Um, I, I, I usually say Alien Resurrection is probably one of the worst movies in the franchise but that is just my opinion obviously See, for me i like, like i always say i hate alien 3 i've watched it once and i was just bitter and sour about the start so i i've never gave it another chance so oh, it, you've got to you've got to give the assembly cut a go because it's it's yeah. not the true fincher cut but it's a near as as we can get it and it's yeah. so good it's like the this, uh, the the visuals the um the soundtrack um this it is a really good movie if you just give it a chance I, I i see i personally like i really like alien 4 resurrection <laughs> like like i do really like that i mean i don't think it's like a great movie but i enjoy it when it's on you know um yeah, I know it was directed by Jean-Pierre Junet, who did, you yeah. know, Delicatessen and stuff. I just I find it too weird. It's it's a little f- too Frenchy for me. Nothing against France or French people, but he goes a bit surreal with it, which yeah. I don't think works for an alien movie. Um, it's not a bad movie, but I always kind of consider it as, like, fan fiction, because I read a lot of alien, like, I read all the alien novels, all the comic books, to me, it's just a standalone alien sort of fan fiction movie. I can complete. I can understand that. I think I am. I I do like Jean Pejanet. Like one of my favorite movies is City of Lost Children, and I like a lot of his other it's, stuff. It's a great movie. City of Lost Children, yeah. Delicatessen are both great movies. Yeah. I just don't think he was the right director for Alien Resurrection. Yeah, and I, 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 I can, I won't argue with that. Like, I can completely see. But I just think, like, maybe when I went into it, I was a big fan of the director, and I watched it, and, and I was like, yeah, I think I could see his style in there, and I think I liked that more than it being an alien movie. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. I, I definitely can see that. Definitely can see that. And I, I also have a massive soft spot for Alien vs. Predator 2. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, didn't really, I, I don't mean to laugh at you there, Shin. Um, <laughs> the, there is good elements of Alien AVP2 Requiem. Um, it's just too damn dark. 
can't see what the hell is yeah, going on. Yeah. I like the second one more than the first one. A- AVP. Controversial opinion, version. I don't like the first one very much. I find the first one to be a bit boring, but I really like the second one because I kind of like. I think they kind of went like balls out. Like they made it like dark and like f- literally dark, physically dark. But like, <laughs> too dark. As, as in like, like you get some pretty messed up bits in that, and like, and I, that's what I liked about it. Like, yeah, well, yeah. You, you see the first ever pred alien, you know, yeah. alien and predator morphed in together. You know, yeah. it's, it's the first time that's been on sit film. So yeah. um, there is good elements of it. It's just, um, you know, yeah, it had the. Um, the cast was bad, the acting was bad, it was just too dark. But, you know, yeah. it's, I, I do watch it every so often and enjoy it, but it's not a great movie. It's a so bad it's good movie. Yeah, I think, you know what, it's quite interesting that we're talking about Alien, because it's just like, it's a coincidence that... But I think Alien, and and Aliens in particular, quite fit into the, the sort of theme of the show which yeah. you probably didn't quite catch from my, because I completely butchered the opening, but we're doing siege movies. <laughs> so, uh, like, you know, so the films that where they're locked in one place and trying to defend trapped, themselves. Trapped, trapped in a, you yeah. know, um, and like, you know, trying to fend off multiple forces, which is kind of aliens. And I've always, like, my favourite, one of my favourite scenes, I think in any movie, like, it's one of my all-time favourite, like, action scenes in like is in aliens and it's the bit where they have the sentry guns like uh on and the aliens yeah. are trying to get in and they're watching the bullets go down and obviously like then they start coming through the walls and the the, the floor and then obviously like hudson gets it up uh, i really i think that uh, that is one of the like best moments and it really fits into the theme of the of the uh of the show really so it's a bit of a coincidence oh, you know so yeah but shall we um i think that's enough of that so we get on to the movies what do you guys think oh go for it sounds good sounds good lovely so we're obviously we're gonna tr- we're gonna go from earliest <clears throat> to earliest release to latest released but we have we have kind of got a bit of a pickle where two of the films have both came out the same year so we had to sort of try and figure out which one to go first, but we've decided the order is Assault on Precinct 13. We've got next is Splinter. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and then we're yeah. going to do Pontypool third. Yeah. Uh, so let's get on with Assault on Precinct 13 from 1976, which was my pick. So I will uh, read the incredible synopsis on here. I've not even pre-read it, so it could be terrible. Um, a highway patrol officer two criminals and a station secretary uh, defend a defunct Los Angeles precinct office against a siege by a bloodthirsty street gang. Okay, fair enough. It does kind of work. Um, So, yeah, 1976, uh, John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13. Okay, so the film starts off with... uh, Obviously, the street gang, it turns out that the street gang have stole a load of weapons. Uh, which we get, like, this opening where there's, like, a bit of a shootout, which was quite interesting because I found out afterwards that, the you know, the gang that gets shot at the very, very start? Yeah. Yeah. That was literally just, like, uh, people from, like, the university. And apparently they just had loads of fun, like, dying, like, getting killed in, like... <laughs> Like you know, getting blood splat all over them and thought, which I thought was quite interesting. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be fair, I think this. I, I was watching a little bit about this film afterwards because I was really interested in it. Mm. And there's a few like little facts I think uh, that I've I've sort of found out. Um, so, what did you guys think of the opening? Like you know, you've you've uh, you start off, you see this this scene, it introduces you to the characters. What do you guys sort of in like? Your initial thoughts, like the first like ten fifteen minutes. My initial thoughts when it first started was like, kind of what I had expected, especially for like a mid seventies film. It's like it has that vibe straight away. Um, has a great soundtrack. I will say that that's oh, one incredible. of the main main things that I did really 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 like about it. Um, but yeah, like obviously that gang being shot and stuff kind of 
because I didn't watch any trailers. I didn't really spoil anything for myself. It was kind of what I was expecting off the bat, but then yeah. it kind of, I don't know, my opinion changed on this film multiple times throughout. Um, so I'll let Ollie say what he has to say about the intro and then we'll, we'll, we'll work through the film. Yeah. Yeah, um, so I, I, I grew up with this movie. This is, when when I sat down to watch it, it was one of those movies where I was like, oh yeah, we're doing Assault on Precinct, to, Assault on Precinct 13, fantastic. It's one of those movies I've seen probably 12 to maybe 15 times, so oh, wow. it wasn't a first watch for me. Um, but I grew up with watching Carpenter movies because my mum and dad were massive Carpenter fans, so I, I was really young when I first watched this movie. Um, I remember it being better, um, but when you're coming down, when you're sitting watching it with your review hat on, you can see slight things that can kind of probably knock it down a little mm. bit. Um, but I, th there's some really good, like, I know Will's mentioned the soundtrack. The soundtrack is fantastic. It's incredible. In it's incredible. It's such a good soundtrack, and it's a Carpenter soundtrack that would obviously follow him throughout his career because, you know, obviously he does his own soundtracks. Mm. Um, and it, it really, it's, it's probably one of the greatest things about this, this movie is the, the synth soundtrack. Um, the intro when the door, the door just opens and the gang just start coming through that little um, it's like a tunnel and then all of a sudden out of nowhere there's just shotgun blasts and you know gunfire yeah. just completely takes the gang out and you're like what the hell is going on here and it's one of those things where you like was it a rival gang but no it turns out it was the police kind of trying to kind of get like get their own back trying to curb the gang problem that Los Angeles had yeah yeah it spends it spends a lot of the opening spends a lot of time with the gang like the main gang but they don't speak really like they don't barely say anything i don't i might be wrong but i don't think they say a word do they or do they say like a little bit but like it's, um it's literally um, a few words you know yeah. and if, if, if you think about it the way the gang acts it's like they're a, a, a faceless enemy of sort with yeah. like that human supernatural threat which kind of links into siege movies because i know carpenter took a lot of inspiration from say like night of the living dead yeah. so the gang act a lot like zombies yeah. you know they move in mass um, they've got no regards to their own personal safety or preservation you know yeah. when they're attacking the precinct they're just crawling through the windows no matter what and you know they they, they can see the rest of their gang being blasted and being killed there's no, you know, no self-preservation. There's um, no humanity there. There's no, like... There's no humanity. Um, yeah. It's like the whole goal is, the gang leader said, you need to get this father because he killed, like, I don't know if he's a high-ranking gang member. Um, I think the but he... I, I saw those four as being the leaders. Like, that's how Definitely. I sort of... It doesn't really explain it, but that's mm. how I... Those four were the leaders. Yeah, and those four and that he, made the blood pack, don't they? So He almost seems like the main one, you know, because he's the one that goes, you know, like, at the start with the ice cream man and things. Like, he's the one that does all of that. So, like, yeah, I feel like he's, like, if not the main one, the, at least the main, like, the main four, you know? So, yeah. That, that's what I loved about the movie, is that, that this gang just don't care there's no self-preservation no. they move and they attack the you know the precinct like they're zombies yeah it, they yeah. just don't care they'll just can... go full force into this thing no matter how much they're being blasted or shot at they're, 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 they've got one goal and that is to get into that precinct to kill everybody and get that father to get revenge yeah i think um like that opening like because obviously it introduces you to the characters a little bit but like at the minute, like w with the gang, like they do obviously they have that blood pack because I'm guessing I because it doesn't really explain it, but I took it that they were upset that the police killed um, the uh, that yeah. that little part of their gang, but they still got the guns out, and then they almost like they took those guns and were like taking their anger out on the town. You know when he's going through and he's got the sniper and he's like the machine gun and he's scoping people out. 
And I don't see the reason what, you know, like, so obviously they, you get introduced to the dad and the little girl and like, you know, you, they just seem like just a normal, like, you know, father, daughter sort of thing. But I don't, you know, like she goes to the ice cream man and I don't know why they attack the ice cream man. Like, I think it was literally like, I think they're just taking their anger out. I think they're just criminals and they just want to kill anyone you know what i mean i don't like at first i thought maybe they might have owed him money but it just no there was just i don't think it was i think it was just which is going to kill this guy you know yeah they're basically just psychopaths really yeah yeah and um obviously like it, there's a lot of different stories at the start you know you've got like the prisoners you've got the main cop um uh what's his uh, what uh, uh bishop You've got uh, the prisoners, Napoleon, and I uh, can't remember the other guy, Tony Burns' character, but I can't remember his name right now. And then you've got, obviously, the the gang, and then you have the father and daughter. So you, it starts off with these four stories and how they all become, like, how they all get to the precinct. But, like, I think the main story, the main most interesting one is the father-daughter and the gang and how they connect. Because, obviously, you have, like... I think it's an incredible scene, but it is pretty dark. Is and I laughed out loud, and I felt a bit guilty for laughing. <laughs> but literally, when the girl goes to get the ice cream, and then she comes back, she goes, "What is it? Ah, oh, this ain't vanilla twist." And then she looks through the window, and she goes, "I asked for vanilla twist," and then just gets shot in the chest. Yeah, that was. It, um, it's it a was... dark. It's 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 a pretty dark way of doing it, really. You know, yeah. just because that 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 boss maybe the boss leader of the gang just turns around with his silence pistol just shoots her right in the chest and you're like yeah well jesus you know even on multiple views it's pretty like brutal. i've watched this it's, it's a brutal sort of introduction to the movie you know yeah i think like i think nowadays you do get sort of like there's a lot of shock movies that you do sort of see things like that but i think for the 70s that like that is shocking, and like it was interesting. Cause I did, I was uh, reading that they, um, because of that one scene, they were gonna rate it like an X, like yeah. like you know, and then um, because of that scene, and then apparently John Carpenter sent them a version of it without that in. Yeah, they approved it. Yeah, they approved it, and then he snuck it back in, like afterwards. That's what I, I read. Like, and he snuck it back in and released it and got away with it. Which I think is hilarious. Very, very sneaky of him to just yeah. bypass it. I think the that that point in the film, I was like, I was like really into it, especially when the gang they're in that like all blacked out muscle car, and they're just kind of like looming, and you can hear them in the background, and they're like, like you said, he, he's like scoping people out, just yeah. these innocent people doing their going about their lives. And I was like, oh, this is, they're like a looming, stalking enemy. Because it's not like they're very yeah. humane, like you said. And then, yeah, when the girl goes back up to the ice cream man. And the ice cream man's nervous anyway. Because he, he knows he's like he's in a bit of danger. And he kind of wants to get out of here. And then as she's walking back up, I was like, no way they're actually like actually going to kill her. And then yeah. it was way more brutal than I was expected. So I was more in a bit of like a little bit of shock at that point. And at that point in the film, I was like, okay, this I can I can see why like this film's got quite a big cult cool kind of following. Yeah, but they use a pretty massive squib as well on the little girl as well when he oh, shoots yeah. her. Oh yeah, it's, it's just like Jesus Christ! It's it's a brutal it's a brutal scene. Yeah, it is. It's it's um it's even though we do live in a sort of multi-sensitized sort of world now, it was still like wow, they they did that. That's like. She just falls to the floor, and mm. you just sort of see yeah. a corpse. And I was like, "My God!" Like they kind of like loom on it afterwards, don't they? Because they they hold the yeah. shot of the of like both of them on the ground. Yeah, and I laughed. I did laugh, like, but it was kind of more in like a. I can't believe they did that. Like that is like, like I laughed like not because I thought it was funny. It was just like what? Like that is. I mean, I, I did find the vanilla like in in hindsight the yeah. fact that she was like, "Where's my vanilla twist?" They get shot like that. But yeah, it was it was uh, it it was pretty uh, shocking, and then that leads to the dad shooting the the gang. Well, we one of the leaders will say, um, 
and then he then runs off to the precinct and they follow him and that's how the movie starts but then in the background of while that stuff's happening you also get introduced to bishop who's i was at sure wasn't sure at first but i think he was newly promoted i think because like i think he just like i don't think he was a rookie but he, i think he was newly promoted into a position uh, and then he's been told to look after this precinct which was getting it was shutting down uh, he just had to stay there the, like the easiest job ever just stay there overnight mm. and then you've got the other story of the prisoners where you've got napoleon and uh i'm gonna just wells, it's wells that's tony, yeah. yeah tony burton's character wells and they're obviously um getting transferred uh and first off, i want to talk about napoleon i thought he was hilarious i don't know why like you know, he, he was just one liner, one liner. Oh, he, yeah. Like, that, like that, that's literally his character is just one line after one line after after one liner. Um, it's, it's he's a little bit cheesy, but mm. he's still he's still kind of hilarious to watch him as well at the same time. Yeah. What, it's just... what I didn't get about his character though is like the other prisoners, uh, Wells and the the really sick one. I don't know his name. Um, there. and everyone else they're like oh that that's napoleon wilson like he's so cool he's so charming and i'm like is he yeah. <laughs> he was a bit he's a bit weird like, he's pulling yeah, out he's these a, weird one-liners weird. and i'm like what why is everyone so like charmed by him and he's like, it's like the, it, the main movie was made in the 70s but he's got his like greased back pomp pompadour as well mm. you know yeah. He just didn't. It was just, yeah. I don't know. He's he's one of those characters where um, you know he, they, they tried to play him off as cool, but it, it just slightly doesn't work. Yeah. But it made me actually love him, though. Like, like because of that is why I liked him. You know, like I feel like he was trying to be because I it, I think like Carpenter said that he was really inspired by like the um, Western movies and especially uh, Rio Bravo which was yeah. probably the biggest inspiration of the film, mm. which was I was very, very close to picking for this episode, but I wanted to watch this more. And um, I think that they were trying to make Napoleon be like, you know, like that. I feel like he was trying to make him that sort of John Wayne, uh, uh, like Clint Eastwood kind of like, you know, yeah. that cool... Like charming calm, main role. Charming character. He's got one-liners. He's like... I just want to smoke, you know, like, like constantly, like, and, um, but I, I feel like he wasn't quite that, but it made me like him so much because of it. Like, I was like, what is this? What like, <laughs> is this character? Like, but I really liked him at the same time. It was, it was odd. I think the, the want to smoke line, I think John Carpenter must have found it absolutely hilarious. Cause I, oh, I was, have. I was a bit sick of it by the end. He was just, I loved it. After every scene, it was just like, anyone got a smoke? And I was like, oh, my yeah. days. <laughs> yeah, I just honestly, like, it just every line, he when he was like, maybe I'll tell you when I like, what did you say? Like, I'll tell you when I'm one day, or you know, and like, yeah. I'm just like, he's trying to set up for so many cool lines. But I did like him. But yeah, he was, uh, he, he did make me laugh a little bit. He was, he was a little bit cringe. He was a little bit. Um... But obviously they end up at the precinct due to the sick guy. And uh, like, so he asked, so they take the, the bus, get, drops off at this precinct just for overnight, just so they can get the guy who was sick feeling better. Um, so that's how, that's pretty much how they all end up in this, in this precinct because the dad escaped there. The bus stopped there because of the, uh, the sick guy. Obviously, Bishop's working there. He was put on that job. And then the other character that we haven't actually spoke about is... Is it Lee? Lee? Uh, the, 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 yeah, the, the secretary. Yeah, the precinct the secretary. secretary. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, she, she's there because she works there. So that's how all the characters get together. And the one thing I really, really liked is... I feel like they did a really good job of getting the characters to this place. And it making it feel not forced. Yeah. Like, it was like... This is how this is the story of how everyone gets here, um, and uh, and I liked that. And it didn't spend too long on it, but it spent enough time that, especially when you've got so many characters and different storylines, I think they did really well of just establishing the characters, 
uh, and the reasons why they're here and the reason why these uh, they end up getting attacked in the end. I feel like they did it quickly and efficiently, and I, like I really respected that. I thought they that was mm. I thought they did that quite intelligently. Yeah. I do think it's got like a relatively long intro before the actual say assault on the precinct. Yeah. Um, but like you, you're right, they, they build up the characters. They have the, like a, a little bit of a backstory between, for each character. Um, the intro, yeah, it, it goes on a little bit just so we can get to know the characters, and then it goes straight into you know the action, which I think it works really well for the movie. Yeah. And I think they cram a lot in for an hour and a half. It's only ninety minutes. Like they get. They open in, they establish the characters, and I think they have a really good amount of time in the precinct. And like, I think they, they, he, he I think Commenter did a really good, he did really good, like to like time management and all that. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the movie flowed really well, um, in my opinion. Well, you got to think this is um, pre-Halloween, you know. Yeah. Um, before this, he did Dark Star, yeah. which was, you know like his sort of intro into filmmaking it was more like a student project that he kind of funded him himself and this was his big first major sort of big release movie yeah and he does such an awesome job doing it as well as like a, a proper first time uh, big budget movie really even though it's not high big budget is you know you can see that there's there's quality on the screen yeah yeah, I think like you know, like Dark Star um, is like I think it was. It was I think he made it during university. It was it was a cheap comedy space movie, which actually weirdly links in with that conversation earlier because he did that with Dan O'Bannon, who ended up doing a, like working on Aliens, uh, an Alien, which again is a, a complete coincidence that we end up talking about all that. But um, you know, so I think this was his first. I make it look like this is his first real movie we can almost say like dark, I, I like dark star but you can definitely like this was his first like proper big yeah. release where he's not working with his mates from university and like he's actually this is his film that he's directing and um and i think it's uh i think like i think he does a uh, for me i think he does a really really good job i think it's directed really, really well. And considering it was £100,000, the film was, like, yeah. I think it was less than that, actually. It was less than £100,000. Um, or dollars, however you want to, you whatever. And um, the fact that he was able to make this, like, with that low budget, for a, an inex inexperienced director, I think that this, this is why he became the... John Carpenter, you know, he's one of the greatest directors yeah, of all time. Yeah. Mm. And I think yeah, seeing, what, seeing what he did with the minimal budget on this film is, you know, it, I think it, it just paved his way, you know, like, and I think, uh, and, and I, I will say, I do think that my negatives about this movie are mostly due to, I think, lack of budget, which we will get into a little bit later on, where, but like, for me, I think if he had, if he had a little like double the budget, I think it would be even better. Like, well, it obviously yeah. probably would be, but I think well, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it when we get there. But like, there, my biggest complaint, I think, is due to lack of budget. Um, but basically, they all get to this uh, precinct, and um, then they start getting attacked, and then it's that scene, you know, when they're all looking out the window and. And like you just sort of well, actually, at first everyone just gets shot by silences first. Like that is, um, I was shocked that they killed off certain characters so early. Yeah, and you know that guy who was on, you know the the the, the copper who's on the bus with them. Yeah, yeah. I he's, thought he's... I thought he was going to be in it a lot more, but he just gets wiped out at the start. I'm like, oh my god! Like I was. Um... I was a little bit shocked that they killed off so many characters. Because it was like it was like him, the bus driver, I think another guy, and there then was the copper, the, the grumpy the... copper who worked. Yeah. There. And then um, did the sick 
The sick guy died at that point, didn't he? Yeah, the sick, yeah. sick guy died. All the coppers on the bus died. Uh, the only people that survived were the dad, the bishop, the, the two prisoners, and the two females, uh, the the secretary, and then the, the lady who works behind the... The phone line woman. The phone line woman, yeah. yeah like they, were the, they were the only ones that survived. And that's quite a... I, I love that scene because they use suppressors, and it's just like... Like you don't know what's there. It's that unknown sort of, and then you just see these guys just getting. It's like, what is that? Like you know, it's you, we know it's the. Uh, but I thought it was just going to be the four of them because I've not seen this film, so I didn't actually know what to expect. I thought the three of them, sorry, were just trying to get in, and then like you see them looking outside, and you see like fifty or sixty of these gang members just all like. I did like that scene. Circling the precinct, and then that's like. That was like a horror film to me. Like yeah. you know, it's like it's like looking out and seeing fifty, sixty zombies outside. You look outside and you just see these stone cold killers, like fifty of them, and they're just they're all like lying like, and crouching. And you can see glints from their like rifles and stuff. Yeah, it was, yeah. And I feel like that set the mood. Like you know, like that was like you're like I watched that and I was like, oh my god, this is like this is tense now. And then. And you think, how the hell are these guys? They've got like, they've probably got like 20 bullets between them. How are they going to get out of this? Like, you just think like, and I think they, um, I think that was, I think it's set up so, so well. Um, but then I'm going to, I'm going to go into the thing I enjoyed least about this mm. is I think the two major action set pieces yeah. are done. I don't want to say poorly, I think they were very restricted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, agreed. I agreed, yeah. It's, I think... Th obviously, we'll get Sorry, to the Kevin. end bit, but when they start... Because obviously, they shoot the people, and then they're kind of discussing what's happening, and then they realise the, um, the phone line and the electricity has, like, gone out. Yeah. Um, And then they obviously start shooting at windows and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it was good at first, but that went on for quite a while. Cause I think, it did go on a long time. Because I think they couldn't really do too much else. Uh, probably, obviously, because you said, like, budget reasons and stuff. But I yeah. feel like at that point in the film was where it kind of slowed down for me. Like, you had, like, you know, the ice cream scene, and then you had, like, the, the first kind of... The first wave, I guess you could call yeah. it, of like you know them shooting yeah. and then shooting the windows. I was like, ah, oh, nice. This is like, this is like quite tense. It's pretty cool. Um, and then I feel like they just kind of put on the brakes a bit instead of going like all out. But I, like you said, there's probably budget reasons. Yeah, I think you know when that first wave comes and they all they're, they're climbing in the windows. Yeah. Like I like that. I like the way they they climb. They're just endlessly climbing to the windows. They don't care about their life. They just want to kill you. Yeah. Like 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 a monster. That's what I think. That's what Carpenter is trying to say there. But and I like the fact that they're doing this. But I think the way it was shot, you just get like repeated scenes of that of like Bishop shooting the window, and then you see yeah. um, Wells shooting the window, and and I was just like. I was like, I would have liked a little bit more, like, a bit more panic in the air, like, in the situation, and a mm. little bit more, like, like, but it just was just like, one's looking at one window, one's looking at the other window, and they just keep shooting until it stops. And I was a bit like, I, I, and I know that it was due to the restraints, and they couldn't have all these crazy set pieces, but I will say, like, I, during those moments, I was like, damn, that could have been a bit better. I think like as well with that, been... with like the attacks, I think what made it a little bit mundane as well is just the camera work. It's just kind of still shots of watching these guys climb through windows yeah. and there's yeah. there's no switching it up, um, which is strange because I thought the camera work in the film, especially when the gang's in the car, they do some like side shots on the car in the sunset and stuff like that. Um, and the bits where they're like looking out onto the car park to see if you can see the gangs and like there's some good shots but when it came to like the main action sequences it was very very still but and yeah it, yeah it kind of took away from the build-up i think 
I just think unless, if he had... Sorry, carry on, Ali. Sorry, uh, unless that's what Carpenter was going for, for this um, sort of faceless monster enemy that have, you know, I know we, we've discussed it before, um, that, you know, they're just climbing through the windows just because they have no self-preservation. You know, it's, there's a lot of uh, similarities to Night of the Living Dead. They are practically like zombies, mm. but they're not dead. You know, they're not the undead. Um, but yeah, yeah, Will's completely right. Um, the, the, the just the still shots, just you know, they, they do get a little bit mundane with when it comes to the action sequences. Yeah, I completely, I completely agree. I think like that was the one moment that I went, I've loved this film, but that bit could have been a bit stronger. Like I think if there was yeah. a bit more budget, I'd have liked to have seen them coming from different angles, coming through the door. And, like, them having to... I would have liked them to change up their st strategy a little bit. You know, like, instead of just him looking at that one window and shooting constantly, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a a dilemma, like, during that combat where they'd have to do some quick thinking, you know? And I don't think there was a lot. Like, I really like the scene mm. when he opens up the shotgun and throws the shotgun to that guy, to Napoleon, and he really quickly, like, half turns and blasts the door. I would have liked to have seen a bit more bits like that. Yeah. But I feel like once that bit went, they were just shooting the same bit over and over again. And um, and I just think that was budget restraints. I really think Carpenter got... I, I don't know, but like I feel like he got there and he was like, I don't... How are we going to make this exciting? I don't have any more budget. Well, let's just shoot them through the window. You know what I mean? And it was just... Yeah. That's how I kind of felt watching that, those bits, you know? What did you guys think to, like, the final act, I guess you could call it? I think the final act, I felt a little bit similar to that one bit as well. I think yeah. it was... I feel like they had a good idea. I just feel like it, the budget restraints and the... Like, even when the, the corridor explodes, you don't see anything. You just see those three in, like... Like, you just see the room and a bit of an explosion in the background mm. and... And again, I just think, like, like I would have liked to have seen a bit more action with that, you know, the manhole thing that they were coming from and, and yeah. stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. like, it just, it it was just very, like, abrupt. And again, I think that was just down to, I think it was just down to budget. Yeah, I I really didn't like the final act. I, I, especially when they've got that, like, what looks like a very weak sign. And they're yeah. just kind of like whacking, whacking these like gang members. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? We've gone from shooting children to just bonking these gang members on the head. I was like, what? Yeah. Um, but yeah, whether it's budget reasons or like the story reasons, whether they weren't quite too sure how to finish the film. Um, yeah, I think it just, yeah. I think in general as the film, it kind of like, goes a bit full throttle like with with the action and with how dark it gets and how brutal it is and then as you come into like what is the main point in the film they kind of like slam on the brakes a bit and it becomes a little bit yeah, mundane and a little bit yeah uh yeah that's just that's just my I opinion i just I, I completely agree with that. Like I, I, I my least favourite part of this film was the the big attack in the middle and the very, very ending. As in like the the, the two main action set pieces for me were the least interesting moments. Mm. But I think like for me, like we've spent a long time on 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 those moments and I do think they are the weakest parts. But I do think the movie really makes up for those two bits in everything in between for me. Like I, I, I loved I loved all the characters and I except for that woman, uh the lady the phone lady, she was annoying. <laughs> but I also like, felt she was she was the only one with a bit of panic though. Everyone else was yeah, so yeah, ready. she was. Yeah. And I didn't <laughs> like I actually didn't like the 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 main woman's performance. I thought she was like I thought she was almost like I get that she was like supposed to be like stone, like you know, like yeah. Uh, a hard nut, but I was like, she's like got no emotion whatsoever. Yeah, like, I thought I... at first, like, oh, 
I quite like this. She's a bit, she's a bit different. She's quite cool. She's quite calm. But then there's, I think there's a point in the film where they they start coming in, and she's just a bit like dead inside. I was like, <laughs> I, I don't know. She just kind of like switches yeah, yeah, off. She, she she is pretty emotionless throughout the movie. Yeah, she was a bit. She was like, I think like they and they. I feel like overall, I like I I really 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 loved everything in between the the ending and that main section. Like I loved the bit when Wells is like, uh, he's really made me laugh. His character and he's like, I've got a plan or something. It's like it's called like saving ass, and it's like <laughs> I sneak out the window and run like hell. And then, like, I really liked his character, and, mm. and then his his whole set piece I loved. You know, when he tries to sneak out, get the car, and you think he gets away, and he's got this big grin on his face, and and then he just gets shot in the back, and he, you see his head go through the wind, the mirror, and like, um, yeah, I loved that bit, and I I really loved the premise, and I there was so much I loved. I just like for me, this film. I know this is probably like we've spoke pretty poorly of the film. I think in general, like of it, like we you know. We, but I I think this film was so close to being incredible. Like there was so much I loved about it, but it was just like the two main scenes were very were yeah. very sort of like reserved. Or... Should we go into like final thoughts and reviews? Yeah, I think we have yeah, um, a little while on this. Yeah, before we do that, um, have you guys seen the remake? No, I've no. not. <laughs> no, with um, I think it's definitely Lawrence Fishburne, and I want to say Ethan Hawke. It is Ethan um, Hawke, yes. I see, yeah, I've it, seen it, that, it, yeah, it follows the same sort of thing, but however, the gang, it's, it's not the gang, it's actually the police, corrupt police that are surrounding the police station. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. It, it's not bad, but it, it doesn't hold up to the original, you know, Assault on Precinct 13, but it, it's it's well worth a watch. Um, for a remake, it's not a great remake, but um, yeah, you know, I, I would recommend just viewing it. Maybe um, it's been a few years since I've seen it, but you know, it, it's still pretty solid. Just other than the gangs just replaced by corrupt police. I, I think I will give it a go. To be fair, because like I like I, I do like um, the actors in there, and I've I've seen it a lot since watching Assault and Precinct because it, I've, when I've done my research or something mm. like but um, yeah I, I will probably watch it to be fair yeah I would it, it, it changes the whole scope as well because it's set during winter so there's a lot of snow and stuff around the precinct um, but it's the same characters um, the same sort of you know cheesy one liners as well but it's done in a more of a serious serious very serious tone yeah. Um, and Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne gives a really good performance in it as a corrupt policeman, if I remember right. Yeah, I think I will give it a go at one point, to be honest. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 that, that, that was me. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> sitting literally next to my uh, rock band drum kit, so... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm fiddling with it. Blaming the rock band drum kit, eh? Oh, I, I will this time. <laughs> Maybe not next time. Uh, I um, yeah, I, I feel like I could spend another hour talking about this film. So I think that we should probably move on to ratings. Yeah. Um, but I will um, I will, I will say that I know that we've spent quite a long time talking, probably quite negatively about certain moments overall. I think really, we're just really... nitpicking because that's yeah. that's kind of what we do when we watch these films. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think, and I, I like I say, I think it's good that we can see because I think as well this movie gets it's very highly rated. Yeah, and it you know it like it. I think it's good that we look. No film's perfect. It's good to to see these things. But I, for me, the reason why the think the things that we're nitpicking don't bother me as much is because I do feel like it was restrictions. I don't think it was due to bad choices as much. I think it could have been done a little bit better, but like it didn't offend me as much as, you know, certain things would. Um but yeah, I I really there was so much I loved about this film. Like despite those one or two moments. Um and that's what I've come in at a four because I think the film, the premise, the 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 craft behind it and i think the ideas behind it 
and the budget that they had, I think he made something really fantastic. And I think I do, I do, I did the one note that I actually kind of wrote like straight after. Uh, and the more that I thought about it was, I feel like this movie isn't a movie for the audience. I don't think it's an audience pleaser. I feel like it's a movie like, and I think Carpenter, when he wants to make a movie, I feel like he, you know, like how like David Lynch and stuff, they don't, they're not bothered about the audience. They want to make a film that, that they love and yeah. they, they put their ideas ahead of what the audience is going to enjoy because i think like the fact that he spent i I was expecting almost like a not a boss fight you know but you know like the you know the three main guys i was expecting them to like be like the final fights and and i think most movies would do that but i think he was so set on his idea and his and he won and i think that's what I actually really respected about the film. He wanted this idea of these faceless Night of the Living Dead almost sort of guys and and I think he I think everything he did was on purpose, whether it was due to budget restraints or and and, and I really respect that. That's why I've given it a four, because I really liked the movie and the more I think about the movie, the more I enjoy it. And I love the premise. But there is like you say, there was a one or two moments that I felt like due to budget due to um maybe lack of experience there was one or two things that let it down from being something even better than a great movie you know what i mean but that's that was just my opinion fair enough i think that's kind of like the general consensus on this film judging from other people's reviews on like letterbox and yeah all that i think you're kind of like in the majority yeah i think so yeah, what did you think, Will? Um, I didn't enjoy it as much as you did, Shin. Um, I did enjoy the film, and I think it has some really great individual scenes, especially kind of like the intro to like maybe like the first two acts of the film. I was really, really enjoying, and I th- it's just that that final act kind of watered it watered it all down for me a little bit and i think the acting was you know it was okay there wasn't anything there wasn't like amazing performances there's characters that i liked or that were a a little a little silly uh and enjoyable um but i think it's slightly more personal taste for this one i think i just didn't kind of get the that kind of enjoyment and stuff out of the film that you did so much um but not to say this is a bad film it's definitely worth watching uh 100 percent. but i think i gave it a three out of five uh, fair. yeah so um like i said this is a movie i have seen multiple times grew up watching it um i love the whole faceless gang that they're more ghoulish than they are actual gang you know there's the no self-preservation uh when it comes to them trying to get to their main goal um for an early carpenter movie it's got a fantastic soundtrack um it's a, such an interesting premise especially if he kind of ripped off a little bit of rio bravo mixed with a bit of night of the living dead um it's Growing up, I would have said this is a four-star movie due to the amount of times I watched it, and plus I'm a I'm a massive Carpenter fan. But rewatching it with my review hat on, I would probably say it's a it's a three and a half star movie. Fair enough. There's just uh, one thing I wanted to add. I think with the premise of it being like, you know, these kind of this like gang versus police, I thought there would the film might have something to say on that and be a little not necessarily political but have kind of something to say but it doesn't doesn't really it just is they just kind of use that premise to set up like a a night of the living dead-esque but in a you know run down city roof neighborhood kind of deal i thought that maybe it say something but it didn't didn't really touch on that at all no i thought it would Sorry, I was gonna say sorry, sorry, Shin. Um, I was gonna say it's probably, you know, um, 
filmed before its time because you know i don't want to get too political but los angeles isn't in you know isn't a great city to live at the minute you know it is um sort of overridden by um drug you know people on drugs homeless people mm. so you know maybe it was filmed sort of before its time you know of how los angeles is kind of sort of um sunk into the ocean as they would say you know and carpenter would revisit this in um escape from la in uh, a few years time you know mm. Right, but yeah. I, I have to say, I have to add. Just last yeah. thing I would add is I, I do like the last scene where um, Napoleon and Ethan kind of just walk out of the station together when they get kind of when the police turn up and yeah. he's like, oh, "I want to walk out with you," and they just stroll through the corridor. Um, yeah, as you know, their the differences have been settled. This is cop and criminal working together to yeah. uh, sort of get the job done, which I, I thought was quite a powerful ending. Yeah, I, I like. Because they go to cuff him, and he goes, "Don't get off him." Yeah, you know, like, uh, get the hell yeah. Off him. <laughs> yeah, and I like that. Yeah, there was like that. You know that he's going back to prison, and but he he kind of like there was like almost like a redemption, and I think yeah, it's redemption sort of, respect the son. Yeah, and and like I think uh, yeah, I do. I I I I kind of understand what you're saying, like on that will and things. Uh, I didn't necessarily get like a big message come across, but mm. like, especially when you watch something like Night of the Living Dead, which I think is very like it has a lot. It's very political. It has a lot to say. You know, I think very you powerful. Know, George Romero was saying talking a lot about like racism and and things like that in Night of the Living Dead. You yeah. know, uh, and like when you watch this, I didn't take that much away from it. But I didn't. That's not that weren't. Like I wasn't disappointed that I didn't take anything like that away, but yeah. Okay, let's move on because yeah, yeah, we've yeah. spent a while on that one. Yes, we have, we have. Right, um, what is next? It is Splinter next, isn't it? Which was Will's pick. Yeah. Um. Well, I struggled no. to find a film that really tickled my fancy, but I think what drew me in for this film when trying to find one was just that kind of um the visual practical effects that i saw that i got a glimpse of because from the trailers and stuff they don't make it look like a good film <laughs> but <laughs> but it has decent ratings so i thought you know let's just give this a chance um yeah i, I guess i'll read the um synopsis it's actually this is actually a long longish one <laughs> three lines <laughs> trapped in an isolated gas station by a vero ferocious splinter parasite that transforms its still living victims into deadly hosts a young couple and escaped convict must find a way to work together to survive this primal terror fair enough <laughs> yeah that's it pretty much there's always like a silence as soon as we finish <laughs> we're just taking it in <laughs> what are people's so, initial thoughts so well what's your initial thoughts this was the movie you picked well what, what did you think initially um, i was quite initially surprised by the performances because it's quite a it's a very b movie it's it's low budget it's got that kind of that 2000s horror movie look Especially like with it being in um, like the south of America, everything's just orange. Um, it's like you know you've got your your escape convicts. They're very kind of country, but the just the performances alone from them being in the car. I was like, no, this is like this is like good for like the level the film is at. I think. Um, especially. What what's his name? He's been in quite quite a few things. Shay oh, Shay Wingham. Wingham. Yeah. yeah, I thought he was like he was great. He was great in this film. Um, but yeah, I found we'll get on to more editing later. But there was a lot of sh couple of weird transitions and a lot of uh, color grading that was a bit strange uh initially there was quite a few scenes that were like 
really way too orange and then later on as it gets dark everything goes a bit greeny um I don't, I don't know if you guys picked up on that at all. I didn't know. I didn't. There, there's just so oh, many. I did. Definitely. There was a few scenes that I was like, why Why is it so green? Like, uh, but yeah. But other than that, I thought it was, was alright. It was an alright intro for a, a film of this caliber. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, I do think that I agree. I think the acting and everything. I, have, I quite liked all the acting and, and things like that. Uh, what did you sort of think of the opening, Ollie? Um, I'll be honest with you. This this movie angered me. I know this is going to be. It's, it's um, I was annoyed watching this movie. Um, just the acting is solid. It's just some of the characters, character choices, mm. just annoyed me so much that by the time I'd finished, I was I was more annoyed with this movie. But looking back and kind of reviewing it in my head, I, just, I actually quite enjoyed it as well at the same time. Yeah. I don't know why. It, it, I don't know if that's just me. But, you know, Shay Wingham, um, who's done, say, Boardwalk Empire, um, he's, he, he played one of the detectives, Joker, does a it's a fan he does a really good he's really good in this as this um convict criminal on the run with his girlfriend it was just the boyfriend paul constanzo who plays seth who you might remember from um i, I recognized him from road trip you know with seth green yeah where he plays like sort of stonery guy in it um his character annoyed me beyond belief because <laughs> I just couldn't believe how um, the the leading lady, um, Polly, played by Jill Wagner, would be with such a man who <laughs> just, he complained and moaned about everything. Cause, so the introduction is um, this couple are out having it, that you know, she wants to go camping, mm. uh, you know, they want to sleep a night under the stars. And th th this guy doesn't know how to put up a tent. He doesn't know how to change a tire. He complains all the time. And it got to the point where I was like, I really hate this character. Why would this woman be with such... I don't want to sound too weird, but like sort of beta male, you know, because, you know, he was totally punching above his weight with this lady. Um, and as soon as he meets up with um, Dennis, you know, played by Shay Wingham, and his sort of she seemed like drugged out or on something yeah I that's when the movie like, kind mm. of improved a little bit and it actually got really going um but yeah it's just this movie annoyed me it was a it was an annoying movie but on reflection i kind of really enjoyed it at the same time i get i get where you're coming from with um seth's character it was just like he was a bit annoying, but I think I found him a little bit... He was like the comic relief a little bit. He was a bit... He was very, like, silly. Um, but yeah, the fact that he, like, didn't know how to do anything other than, like, his science background, which comes into play yeah, geology much later on. Like like that. Later on. Um, I think, for me, I kind of think that... It didn't bother me as much mm. because I think the movie was trying very hard to make you think that you know, like you know, like when they they get kidnapped or ho ho held hostage, even the mate, like uh, the the criminal uh, Shay's character, I, can't remember his, I don't remember his name, but he was um, uh, he was literally like getting sick of him, thinking like, can you do anything? Mm. And I think they were. I think that was definitely on purpose. I think I think they were like, let's try and make somebody who's a little bit useless when it comes to the outside like, world and stuff. and yeah. like you know and being a like you say like he's a little bit like you know what like you said like beta sort of. But then I think I think what they wanted to do later was go, okay, you see all that stuff you weren't so good at. This is where he comes in handy because yeah. he's saving lives. Yeah, I and he's that. actually quite. And that's how. That's why it didn't offend me as much. I think they could have done it better. I think I would have liked a little bit more. I would have liked to have seen him redeem himself or show his strengths a bit more. But I kind of understand what they were doing, and I think that's why it 
it bothers me less. You know what I mean? But I completely get what you're saying. He was, the first half an hour, he was useless. <laughs> like... It's just that I think, yeah, they just kind of set up his character to... For him to come into play much more prominently, prominently later on. Yeah. Yeah, he certainly um, obviously redeems himself, you know, maybe like last quarter of the movie. But the whole, I know, I'm sure we'll pick on this, uh, pick on this later with him freezing his, uh, freezing himself to get his body temperature down. Mm. Him walking to that car, police car, was excruciating to watch. And I don't know if that was just me, but I was like, I, Jesus Christ, you know, just I was fuming. get in yeah. the car, shut the door. I mean, and I just do what you got to do. I get it. But he was a few degrees from basically being <laughs> frozen to death. So I, I wouldn't know what it would be like in that situation, but I can't imagine he'd be very fast. I think I understand <laughs> why he was walking like that, but it was still infuriating. And he didn't even close the door when he got in the car. And I'm just like, mm. Jesus Christ, like, yeah, it was, I, that annoyed me that bit. I remember once coming home from a Dropkick Murphys gig in London and walking home in uh, minus three degrees, like freezing. I have never been so cold in my life, but I still, I was still acting and walking better than he was calling from a gas station for the, than him walking from a gas station to 10 meters to a cop car yeah it, it just i it, it just made me hate his character even though he kind of does his whole redemption bit um and it, yeah and you're right there both of you are right with his redemption and um you know how they played him as this sort of beta male sort of character he, he still was quite an annoying person throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do get that. I, I also think that, like now, now we're talking about it. I'm thinking about it. In the act, when the actual stuff happens and all of these, like everything, everything starts to take place and all, all that. Shay, who's this alpha, like you say, like let's just like alpha more, a lot more alpha, alpha. than than seth you know he's like a tough hard he didn't do a whole lot through the rest of the film you know like it was seth who saved his life it was it was seth who thought of the idea even though he he went through it and a little bit like he was walking the way he was walking and I, I, that bit did annoy me and i get that but like he it was his idea he was the one who kind of figured a lot of the things out mm. he was the one who even thought of the idea in the first place he's the one who comes back in and sort of saves them that guy, the main, the actual Shay guy, I don't think he did a lot until the very, very, very end. Yeah. Well, I think you know, yeah. his, obviously his girlfriend um, gets caught by the, the, the infection, we'll call it. Um, yeah. And I think that he kind of goes into a bit of shock, doesn't he? Because he's just, yeah, like he gets dragged, dragged back into the gas station. Um and I think from then on out, he's not really, like, thinking straight. Because, obviously, when they're in the car and stuff, he's, like, he's kind of on the ball. He knows where he wants to go because he's on the run. And then after after the events of his girlfriend dying, he, he's kind of, like, becomes a shell of himself, I guess. Yeah, I think, I, 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 like I say, like, I completely get, like, the frustrations with that Seth character. I completely do. But I do, I, I, I see what they were trying to do. Even if some moments they, they, they didn't, it didn't work. So, but I think it's an interesting conversation to have. Really yeah. To do. So, um, what did you guys think about the practical offense and uh, practical effects and say the um, sort of infection slash virus slash monsters that they had in the movie? I love the practical of practical effects themselves. It looks so cool, and just that kind of spikiness. I, I, it creeped me out a bit, like just being like accidentally like poked or prodded by something, and it just becomes part of you. Um, the only one that I found a bit weird was the very first instance in, um, 
when they're in the truck and there's that like dog beaverish type thing yeah. that was the only one i was it, like that looks a bit weird um, yeah, you, but you don't really get a chance to see it anyway due to the I editing was. yeah the old god the editing was unbelievably atrocious in this movie as an epileptic i was probably a couple of scenes from having a seizure watching this movie um, it was literally it was like, dangerous <laughs> it was dangerous the cameraman was must have been drunk while filming this because when we when we go back to the practical eff uh, effects the practical effects were fantastic you know there's a couple of scenes where you see um the the affected lady um try and push her arm through um you know the the yeah. night pay oh, glass. Yeah, i noted yeah. that down that the arm scene was oh yeah. my god see the skin peeling off as she's trying to get her arm through and you're like oh there yeah, the, the effects are so good or when the when when the lady sheriff turns up and she gets dispatched and she's just pulled up and you see her body just rip in two yeah and you see your guts and viscera just as, as she's been pulling apart the, the practical effects are amazing it's just the the camera work and editing was so bad that you kind of didn't know what was going on at the same time like the cameraman was drunk and he was like the director was like okay just wave your camera all over the place so we can't really see what's going on um and it's just one of the like the, the many downfalls of this movie was the camera work i think the camera and editing i think that's the big elephant in the room i think that's the that's the one thing that is just like what were they thinking yeah I think they used it to try and m maybe because it's such a tight budget that they like try to mask the effects a little bit so we can't, you know, it's so that it doesn't look like. Yeah, and I think but I, I think, think it was the best part of the film almost the practical effects. It's but a we shame never... because the practical effects when you saw it looked yeah. really good. And then and they, the, just, and they just they just hide it and it mask it. There was one yeah. scene where is it is it um what's what was her name uh, Lacey when she. You know when she's banging her head on the glass. Oh yeah, yeah. That you know what yeah. it, the her the way her mask. I think she was wearing like a prosthetic sort of mask. It kind of like looked like something like from uh, Possessor. Um, you know, like like it looked scary. And like when like like if you pause it and look at that face, I was like, that is fantastic. But like, why do they insist on like when she's banging her head? That's brilliant. But then like, I feel like. I get the like you know it's like the precinct thing they had a limited budget and yeah. they actually they had to they had to hide things because i do i can imagine that like yeah the effects were really good but they probably couldn't show a lot of it you know because of it's probably not cheap you know but i would have rather done just show less yeah and then i think it would have been it would have been a lot it would have hit a lot harder and it would have been a lot more impactful if you know when that when Lacey does start smacking her head, just show her smacking her head once or twice, then cut back to the people. Like let her, let us use our imagination, because at the minute, because you you've, yeah, you've got like you've got like you know a lot like when the copper gets lifted in the air. That yeah. seems terrible, but then in the middle of it, you get this really great like rip in half sort of. Like, yeah, when she's on the gas station roof, and she, you can see her, she's still alive, but she's slowly getting yeah. ripped apart. And when her when her uh, like legs get detached from her stomach, and you see her the skin rip off, that is fantastic. Yeah. Just so good. Just, just show that bit. You don't need to have another ten seconds of camera going crazy because that that doesn't let me use my imagination because I'm seeing it's just it's just chaos. You know, just show like show it in. I would have rather see it in like less of it than what they shown us and i think that was the worst decision that turned this film from what could have been something really good yeah to Imagine. something that was a little bit mediocre for me like mm. and i think it's a terrible terrible decision and i do have one question though unless it was just me that was watching it so they open up a freezer climb into the freezer and they end up in another room 
Yeah, I don't know if like. I, I just I was like, is it is, is that what American freezers are like in gas stations? I have seen it behind the beers, and they end up in like a pretty big space, like an extra room. Yeah, I do think that I do think they exist because in yeah. uh, in the movie Intruder, uh, with uh, like uh, Ted Raimi and all that in it, and they have similar thing in that as well. And I think that does exist. I think like I have seen that in like American movies before. I was going to say, it must be an American thing just for them yeah. to walk into a freezer and have a separate room just by, hidden behind a freezer. I was like, oh, wow, that's 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 a bit weird. Yeah, I've never seen it other than in films. Like, I think it is like an American thing. Like, I know what you mean, though. I did find it weird at first because, like, you don't know where Dennis, um, Shay's character, Dennis, w where he is. He kind of, like... He goes missing for a little bit, and then he just pops his head out of freezer door, and he's like, "Guys, in here!" And I'm like, "What? Why is he? <laughs> how is he? How is he in there?" And then, then it kind of shows how like deep it is. I was like, "Oh right, okay, I get you." Like, how are they all gonna cram into this like door? Yeah. <clears throat> so Dennis gets infected by the splinter virus. Yeah. And they decide to cut his arm off. Oh, that. And it's done in such. It's done in such a way that I was thinking, okay, so they haven't really tourniqueted him well, so he's just going to bleed out. But they cut his arm off, and it's like he's perfectly fine. He's not weak, <laughs> or he's not, you know, just dying from just blood loss from the the loss of his arm. He's up and up and about, and he's, you know, towards the end of the movie, he's got his pump action shotgun. And he's just pumping it with one arm whilst shooting it with one, you know, with his one hand. Yeah. yeah. I was like, this guy should probably be passed out from blood loss or yeah. yeah. He was yeah. just a little bit sleepy. Arm cut off. <laughs> it was just yeah. He was he was like, oh, I've just had my arm cut off. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm I'm going to tackle this. You know. Um. It, it just became a little bit unbelievable. Yeah. Even though it's a pretty that, unbelievable movie. That arm yeah. scene though definitely made me wince. Like that—that that mm. was probably one of the practical action scenes that they didn't completely mess uh, up, like mess up and mask with like effects and silly shit. That I was like, and I think that's why it was so impactful when they just they just keep smashing it, and then obviously he gets the the Stanley knife and starts like cutting away. I'm like, oh my god, it's horrible yeah. to watch. But I was like, yeah. That's what know, the whole uh, film could have been like. From experience, I, I have seen an arm amputation, mm. um, and it, it, it's, it's, it's nothing like that. I know it was in <laughs> a, a theatre setting, but it's you you would be there for a hell of a long time. Oh, yeah. Cut someone's arm off with a Stanley knife. When he said, just, like, pass me that, I was like, really? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just wouldn't the work. Bones? But definitely, the, you, you has, there has to be, like, a... What do you call it? Like you have to take yourself out of disbelief. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I think like for me, obviously, I have no experience in that. So I was like, I was just like mortified by that. I was like, oh my god, I feel sick after like, especially when it breaks his arm. Yeah. You know, like when like the thing like makes his arm like snaps his elbow. Yes. There. Yeah. I was it's like, such cool, it's such a cool effect. It oh, works so, so well. It's so it's such a good good little scene. Oh, um, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm quite angry. Not angry, not really. But I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed because this film has so much going for it. Yeah, it has so much going. The runtime is perfect. One yeah. hour and twenty minutes for a bunch of people in a in a gas station surviving. Perfect. That's what I want. I don't want to. I don't need to watch a two hour movie like that. One one hour twenty. It flies by. I like I like the characters. I like the acting. I like the performances. The practical effects are brilliant. The monster design and idea of the monster is so unique. Yeah. Yeah. So unique, like really unique. And I think I I I like you say because I think the monster is so unique. Some of the logic behind how they can you know like freeze in yourself and i i don't know so to me i was just quite i thought that's quite interesting maybe like scientifically it might be incorrect i don't know but like i just think like it was such a unique premise of having like the blood and then it having the split i've never seen anything like that ever and i don't think i ever will it's such a unique idea 
And that's why I'm so angry, because it's like they've just they've got so much good here. And the, he obviously they're a very talented team because the practical effects are great and the actors are great. Everything was really great. The cameraman w was just, it was just like the decision to do what they did really dampened it. Yeah. And that's what annoyed me because they had so much going for it. Definitely. Do we want to get onto reviews and then... Uh... Yeah, I think so. Otherwise, this is going to end up being quite a long one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it, it was your your pick, Will. You go, you go with the review. Okay. Um, I think overall, like like Shin just said, the performances, the monster, the practical effects, the the kind is very with the runtime and you know, like the performances and everything is quite engaging. It yeah. it never really slips for me there's no parts in the film where i'm like uh this you know that it, it it's like constant but just the editing and everything that just waters down what everyone everyone else has put in a lot of effort um but yeah i gave it three out of five solely for performances acting and everything but editing wise probably one of the worst worst things i've seen in a while um, that's fair yeah i'll, I'll leave it fair. at that ollie do you want to go next um so like i said i was i was quite angry with this movie once i finished it um but on reflection there's a lot i really loved about this movie the whole virus slash um, plague thing they were going for is really unique you know being um, stuck by stinger which you know obviously where the movie splinter comes from um, is it's a great premise um, the special effects are great the acting is pretty solid throughout um, it's just the editing and the camera work seriously let this movie down um, so you know, obviously, I would have probably said, "Oh yeah, two two out of five star movie." Um, after initial watch, but kind of thinking back, there was quite a lot I enjoyed, and it would be a movie I would probably revisit again at some point. Um, so I'm going to bump it up to a three star movie. But it's just the editing, the strobe effects, the lighting camera work like the, the cameraman was just pissed throughout um it, it just kind of let it down slightly mm. so uh, I'm, I'm gonna bump it up to three 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 stars out of five a generous three stars out of five yeah i think uh that's 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 fair i'm gonna i'm gonna wear uh, i've said three stars as well um so we're all on three stars with this one um and I think we all kind of put on the same boat. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm not going to repeat what you guys have said because I feel the exact same. I just think like um, this film. I feel like could be the way everything. The way everything else about this film. If they got that camera down and focus on that, I could be looking at four, four and a half stars because it, it's such a good B movie, fun film. Like I really think if they pulled that the rest that's the stuff that they failed on off, I think it could have put it up another like one and a half stars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I think because I think it's quite like an, an an underrated film, but if the editing and that was on point, it'd be like it'd become like a bit of a little bit of an underground cult classic type film, I think. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean Definitely. I've watched it I've watched it like three or four times. So I've revisited it a few times. There's, there's a lot to go back to. But... Yeah. Just the camera work lets it down. Really. Yeah, massively. It's the worst decision. And I did look at what the director did, and I thought, like, he's going to have so much potential, like, because there is a lot great here. But he only did the Grudge 3, <laughs> yeah, and I hate I that. that. I yeah, hate didn't he do film. Rings as well? I don't know if he did. I'm not sure, but I know he did. Yeah, I'm I know sure he did, did the Rings movie as well. I'm pretty sure I know the first Ring movie from America. I think was actually the Japanese director, but I know there's like sequels and stuff, so he probably did that. But I know he did The Grudge Three, and I know that because I hate that movie because it's one of my favorite 
movies of all time, uh, like the original Juan, and then The Grudge Three is probably the worst in the whole series. So then I was like, oh, okay, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, no, he wasn't. I don't. I, I didn't look at all of his films. So he, he might have did some of the Rings, but I don't know who did. Maybe did he do the Rings? As in the third one. Yeah, as in like the rings, rings. Um, oh, you know sorry, the, I thought you the meant ring. the Yeah, I yeah, he that. he did that. Oh, I, I can't remember what year it was. It was probably what five, six, seven years ago where we did the rings movie. I um, went cinemas to watch that. That was bad. Yeah, yeah, he did, he did that as well. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame because I do. Um, yeah, this film so so much potential just let down by a massive thing, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Righty. Uh, do we go film. to uh, the third movie of the day? Uh, yeah, this last... was uh, my pick. It was your pick. Yeah, so um, I decided to go with Pontypool. It was a movie that I had watched previously, back in 2008 when it first released. But um, I don't really remember it. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because I barely remember it. But I thought, well, it's sort of a siege movie so i thought we'd watch it and discuss it um so yeah pontypool from 2008 uh directed by bruce mcdonald um the initial tagline is shut up or die so um when a disc jockey grant mazzy reports to his basement radio station in the canadian town of pontypool he thinks it's just another day at work but when he hears reports of a virus that turns people into zombies, Mazzy barricades himself in the radio booth and tries to figure out a way to warn his listeners about the virus and its unlikely mode of transmission. That was much better than the uh, IMDb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I looked at the IMDb one and I was like, no, that, that's a terrible synopsis. So I, I went on Letterbox and uh, read theirs. So, which is a, it's, it's a far better synopsis of the overall overall movie yeah yeah so um what did you guys think uh you go first it's your movie <laughs> so i love the premise of this um i think the character grant mazzy played by stephen mccaty he you know he goes into it sort of like a he's a disc jockey um he's obviously got alcohol problems um it's like i don't know if they allude to it in the movie but it's like he was like this hot shot disc jockey that is kind of being relegated to some pissant town in like canada yeah where he, he I, wants to okay. yeah he wants to get out uh, get out his sort of views and feelings on things but he's kind of not allowed to because of he's he's quite a controversial controversial disc jockey um and then all of a sudden you know he's on his way to work early morning and he see he accidentally gets into it's not sort of a car accident but he comes across a lady out in the blizzard because there's a blizzard going on um that's he's you know she starts whispering to him through the window and he's trying to help her but he's like okay it's just some crazy lady and he just ends up at his radio station ready to do his morning show um it's uh, the premise is great it's it's got this whole sort of awesome wells um war of the worlds sort of thing where it's very just stuck in this one point he's in a radio booth he's describing what's going on on the outside world and he's trying to figure out what is going on but it's kind of mixed with a little bit of again night of the living dead yeah um what are your thoughts pj shin i first off um the acting uh, the, 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 i can't remember what his name is but the the main guy grant is it grant mazzy, mazzy. Is that, is, that's yeah, mazzy. Grant mazzy. mazzy that's what yeah look at the imdb mazzy phenomenal performance oh yeah. great performance absolutely what a character what a great character but i will say the first off right at the get-go i I don't know if it was just me being stupid. It potentially there's a high chance it was, but I but you kind of just mentioned it then. I didn't quite understand what his story was. I I was oh. like, is he new to this place? Is it? I don't quite. I couldn't. I was trying to. I even like paused the movie and like 
Googled it, trying to look at the synopsis and stuff, because I was like, is he what is it is he worked here for a long time? Or has he just started working here? I don't I wasn't, I wasn't sure at first either, but then after a while, after like the back and forth between him and uh Sydney, I kinda yeah, got the producer. I kinda got the impression that he was once like a bit of a you know, a bit of a mm. big name, bit of a hot shot, and now he's a bit past his prime and he's become a bit, you know, a bit controversial and he's I kind been of felt kind of, Yeah. I kind of felt like, you know, like the way that he was annoying Sydney. Yeah. I kind of felt like they've been friends for a long time and like but then I would the next minute I would think, is he have they just met each other? Like and, it, and that it, was, it was definitely really weird new, dynamic, wasn't it? Yeah, and that was the first thing that I was like I'm a bit confused. And I, I do kind maybe I think it might it could have been maybe my fault. But the one thing that that let my, let this move down a little bit for me was there were so many things I was confused about. Like, I don't want to go too far in the future yet, but, like, even the actual overall infection and the rules of the infection and why certain people wouldn't get infected, why certain people were, I just felt confused. Like, I didn't fully understand it, and I think maybe because it's a lot of dialogue, maybe I need to watch it a couple of times. But from this viewing, I have seen it before when it, but that was when it first came out. So I do not. I was a very. I was much younger then. But like watching yeah. it now, I just kind of was like, like I was just a bit lost, multiple times with multiple things. And I was lost throughout me. it. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know, because around the radio station, you see all these big like placards and pictures of, oh, this radio station has got Grant Mazzy. He is the controversial disc jockey, DJ, radio host. Um, but it felt like he was sort of on his first day on the job. Mm. But then the way he was with his producer was like he had been there quite a little while as well. It was it was confusing about how far into his sort of story we were. They had like this dynamic, like where like you can tell that it was like she cares a lot for him mm. and they care for each other but he pushes the buttons and they they kind of thrive off annoying each other and it it felt like they've had this relationship for a long time where it's kind of like uh like it looks like they hate each other but they really like each other really and like and, and then and then the next minute i'm thinking have they just met i i, I, I was yeah and i was yeah. just sitting there thinking am i dumb or... because it, yeah, also... it felt like you knew a... sorry yeah. sorry well um, no, you go well. I, it also alludes to it being one of his first days, because um, is it Ken Loney, the guy that's in the chopper? Yeah, he, the fake chopper. Yeah, the fake chopper, which he doesn't realise until later on when shit goes down and Sydney's like, you know, Ken's not in a chopper. Like, yeah, he's stop. just sitting, he's just yeah. sitting on a hill. Just like, overlooking he was the like, town. stop giving him shit. He's not in a chopper. He just does this. Blah blah blah. So. It it, it it alludes to him being either his first day or his first week. But like you said, his kind of chemistry with Sydney is as if they've been working together for, like, years. Yeah, it's like he references, because you know Sydney is divorced, got a couple of kids, the kids are living with the father in, um, in like, Ontario, in Ontario, Canada, like, in a major city. But it's weird, because it's like, you're right, it's like it could be his first date, or he could have been there a few days. It's just the timelines are just really weird and confusing. Yeah, I completely agree. But getting off that that bit, I think like my actual thoughts, other than being a bit confused, uh, I loved so much about this. Like this, the first, oh, yeah. the first half of this movie is, despite me being a bit confused, I loved it. It made me laugh. It really, I was laughing a lot. I thought it was hilarious. Some of the dialogue, uh, but then some of the the concept the concept of hearing the guy you know that especially the sun the sun sunny copter guy whatever his name was the concept of hearing his struggle and him panicking and him hiding mm. through a phone call on the radio and then all grant can do all mazzy can do was say just hide run get out of there oh my god that was like so it was brilliant so, it so was brilliant. so good. It was so yeah. tense, and you, you were hanging on every word. Yeah. Um, and you literally, all, all the camera does is just pan to Grant Mazzy, 
just talking to him you don't see anything else but you're literally just getting a phone call story and it is so tense and really well done yeah and you've got the girls on the outside and they're feeding them information and they're yeah. they're like the no one knows what's going on you're hearing one thing you're hearing another thing the girl's getting phone calls and she's giving him stories and then and then he wants to talk about his stuff and she wants him to cut and he keeps talking that stuff was fantastic absolutely fantastic but then there's a weird part in the movie where they keep referencing a missing cat so grand yeah. massey will will do like a sort of advert sort of thing about a missing cat and then at the beginning of the movie you see posters of a missing cat i don't know i was just like oh this yeah this is a little bit weird it's it, i don't know i don't know it, it was a very confusing sort of uh beginning and middle and then it gets super confusing for the last third of the movie mm. yeah i like i like the missing cat bit because for me like the missing cat was kind of representing like like he wants to talk about this crazy thing that's going on but he kind of all, yeah. all he wants to say is just talk about the cat talk about the you know like she kept kind of trying to ground him to this small town like kind of yeah. vibe but he he wanted to like get someone out there kind of thing yeah, yeah it's all when the um the the, that that family come in to sing a song. Oh, oh my god! And he, and he really that doesn't want to do it. And they bring this family because they're doing like a drama or a play in the in the town. Um, and he's sitting in the booth and he's like, he, he wishes he was somewhere else while this family sing this song from the play they're going to be in. And he just wants to get back to the hard hitting stories <laughs> of what the hell is going on. But instead, because it's a radio show and he's got to ap appeal to the audience that are listening. Um, He's got to have this random family on to sing a song. Yeah, and it was it was it was hilarious. And he has that. I think it's like an executive guy that's calling him, like an old friend or something. And he's just yeah. pointing the phone in their face. <laughs> that had me in stitches. <laughs> yeah. it's literally... yeah, this, this is this is where my life is. Where I was a hot shot DJ, and now I'm sitting <laughs> on some sheet beef listening to this crap and he just points his phone to this family singing and it, it's so good I was, and I was, he's like that's Lawrence of Arabia and he's like that's yeah. Osama Bin Laden yeah. <laughs> I was dying it's literally like it's that that one scene was horror comedy gold yeah. because they actually like you. I'm laughing at that bit like even from the minute when he's like right he's like they're literally there like this family all stood there and he's arguing with Sydney, and then you get that bit where they go into the booth and that's hilarious and it's really brilliant. funny and then it cuts to quite a creepy bit oh where yeah she, she keep, like that for me is that is perfect horror comedy how you can make me laugh so much and then all of a sudden just twist it make it and so then tense. actually quite quite tense and creepy you're like oh my god and at this point you don't quite know what's going on but you know there's something that for me well that was like that was so good so so good this there's this weird bit when you know grant's talking to sydney and obviously they're talking about how <coughs> the um chap on the hill is obviously he's not in a helicopter mm. but everyone thinks he's really uncomfortable so they kind of allude that the guy's a pedophile yeah I didn't I get like, that bit. Like I was like, well, where the hell is this coming from? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. He, everyone loves him. They love his little re traffic reports. But, yeah, everyone finds him a bit uncomfortable because they think he's a paedophile. The thing is, is, like, she goes, like, he's like, yeah. I'm sorry for your loss. And then she goes, no, he was a paedophile. And then she says, <laughs> but then she says, but no, not really, but we didn't let our kids near him or something. And I was like, what like what was that like she threw a comment afterwards that made me go like is he or is he not i wasn't sure like yeah i that was a bit random i that. think but it, i it think they were trying me, to go it for made like, me laugh yeah they were trying to make it comedic but the timing of it was just the way she came blurted out with it it was like wait what 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 because yeah. I, I think they 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 kind of did that throughout the film like that mix of like really laugh out loud moments and then switching up back to the really anxiety building tense moments and they're they quite good at that but yeah that one that one part i was a bit like wait wait what but he's, he's just i think that's after he just dies and then he's she's like oh, oh i'm re really sorry sydney and she's just like eh, yeah he's kind of a pedo and i was like what <laughs> 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 okay uh, I, <laughs> 
I am. Um, that sort of that kind of like gets into like about that point for me is when you know what I kind of feel like you know when the doctor sneaks in. Yeah. yeah. From that point, that was the when I was a bit like, lark. yeah, I would have rathered like just for me personally, I would have rathered instead of trying to do all this mumbo jumbo of like the voices infecting people, certain words infect you. I would have just rather have watched a zombie film where Grant, where Mazzy, by like the end of it, is like just trying to talk to whoever's left alive and and yeah. and, and guide them through. I think that would have been a lot more powerful. But then I, I just feel like the last act, they just try to add so much. And then I, if I was not already a little bit confused at certain moments, by the end of it, I'm like, I'm lost. I'm like, I don't know what. I get that there's the word, is it kill or something or something like that. In fact, yeah. so, so what I understand from it is that there are certain sort of buzzwords that can infect you. But if you say other words to counteract that, it can de-infect you. So that's why he's sitting in a booth just mumbling for quite a long time, just saying random words to try and de-infect people from this virus. It was at that point where it kind of lost me. And, and you're right, Shin. It, if it, it would have been so much cooler if it was... I love the concept that maybe, you know, a word could infect you. But, um, but I love your concept of, you know, he is the last person sort of alive in this rural Canada, Canadian town. And he's just trapped in this um, booth, trying, just keeping people going, trying to talk and stuff. It would have gave him that meaning, you know. I think that would have been like this Absolutely. is his purpose. This is his purpose in life. Is he is like I would have even like even if he got bits, and then he's in there and he's just talking. Like I, I, I would have just rather than instead of trying to go with this crazy abstract idea. And I get it's unique, but for me it just didn't work. I would have yeah. rather than just go right. They're zombies. You know what a zombie is? Yeah, we're not going to put a lot of zombies in the movie. But you know what it is. They're like infected or possessed or whatever they want to be. And and he's in here and he's just like, I would have rather just see it end him in the booth saying, everybody, like, you know, whoever's alive. You know, I would have rather that and um, than, than the mumbo jumbo that they kind of went through uh, or, or went to. I think I partly disagree. I think okay. that like the kind of word, word spreading virus i was really quite on board with but i do agree past the point where they leave the booth and try and think of like ways to heal people i thought that bit was dumb and at that point i was it like was nah, that's that's i've lost it but yeah. the the idea of people like catching it via certain keywords or from what I understood, if you were saying a word and it wasn't quite clicking in your head and you started stuttering and then went, like, I think that was really effective because when you, when you heard, once you kind of understand, like, people are kind of becoming stuck with one word in their head, you're like, oh, shit, like, it's going down. And every time that happened, I was, it put me on edge. Like, every time, like, one of the main characters, like, Laurel Ann's like kind of stood there for a bit and she she I think she says breathe or something um, yeah oh no that's the doctor I think that says breathe but he when like certain characters started stuttering I was like oh shit like the it was really good at building anxiety and through that storytelling through the radio and I think that kind of back and forth between um, like Ken and Grant and the storytelling and using it to your imagination i think was really really good it's just that kind of i feel like they didn't quite know how to end this film and that kind of final act where the doctor's mumbling to himself trying to figure it out uh realizing that it's not you it's all right if you don't speak in english and then they leave to try and think yeah. of a cure because um yeah sydney's sydney's saying like kill kill and Grant's like trying to come up with a, a counter word. I thought, oh, nah, they've they've lost me now. But yeah. up to that point, I was like really engrossed. 
<laughs> this this kind this movie kind of reminded me of like a spin off of like George Romero's The Crazies a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. I can see. Yeah, that. when I was watching, I was like, yeah, this kind of reminds me of like say if this was happening at the exact same time as The Crazies was happening, um, which you know obviously it's not, but it, I kind of enjoyed it more if I kind of thought that fact about it. Mm. Like they were more, they were like we're kind of saying zombies, but they were kind. Of they weren't like, really zombies, were they? They were more like they were more like crazies, like the movie, yeah. like because they're just psychotic, like lost their minds. Because you know that bit when like they open the door and this, and then they all start charging in. Mm. They're talking, yeah. they're shouting, they're shouting at them, and it's they're yeah. almost like an angry mob, like, and I think like. I really think that I would have rather them just play on stuff like that a little bit more towards the end, you know, instead of like because, like you say, you could have done that. That that's the the way that they stutter the words is scary when she's there and she's in she's just impersonating the kettle or the whatever it was. Yeah, that was, she's, that's a really good it, scene. It's really scary and it's really good, yeah. but like I just think I would have rather them. I think I would have just rather them. They can do all of that stuff. And make all those scary tent scenes, mm. but I wish they would have just simplified the story. Something you know, I think they just tried to go too elaborate. Yeah, really. that's yeah. that's what I, I think. I would have rather them go. Let's let's make because they've already got a great premise. They've got an incredible premise of it all being in a, a, a radio, and it's unique because you're not seeing the action, you're hearing the action. You're, you know, like they've already got so much unique. I don't think they needed to just keep adding all this stuff in. And it just got, I just got lost. That was just me anyway. Yeah, I, I didn't find myself getting lost too much, but I'm thinking about it like now and afterwards. You know when Laurel, because Laurel Ann's like one of the first ones to turn inside yeah. the booth. And yeah. they're like, okay, we're fine in here as long as she can't hear us. Um, but then she starts going really crazy and starts like, hurting herself and banging banging herself against like the glass vomiting all over the um, glass and then yeah that like vomit scene i was like what but then the doctor kind of explains it but not really um yeah, he kind of does a semi exposition dump because earlier in the movie you hear that you know the guy that's sitting on the hill the fake helicopter pilot he's watching you know the the crazy slash zombie people attack his clinic and he escapes but then runs to the radio station, um, and he does this sort of sort of exposition dump. But you're still kind of confused about what's really going on. Yeah, and I just found it weird. Where like obviously the group of people then come in, but they're not exactly violent. They're just kind of heading towards the sound, which is what yeah. Laurel Ann was doing. But she, yeah, she just went like re maybe because she was infected earlier, but. I don't know, but that yeah. there was a there was a couple of scenes. So I think Sydney's talking on the phone, and Laurel Ann found a way to be able to hear them because she thinks maybe they can lip read. Um, yeah. yeah. But but she can't. But then Laurel, uh, Sydney's on the phone to her kids, and Laurel Ann is like miming what she's saying, and I that really freaked me the fuck out for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Like I just think, look, like, I think that all three films today have had some incredible things about them, but I just think there's been certain things that have let them down. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I think for me personally, well, actually, no, I take no. I was going to say this one. I think Splinter affected me more because that was just really bad choice. Uh, but I think in this, it was just, I think they just tried to do too much. And that was the, that was what lost me. But yeah. But uh, do you want to go into ratings or is there much more you want to bring up or? Um, the only thing I will say, like, um, the character of Grant Mazzy, like the acting it became so good, especially at the amount of close ups he has. And the like, the subtle nuances in his performance that make it so good. And then when the Doctor came along, his his character was a bit strange, but also the acting was very, very strange. 
Yeah. I, th- th- and then, like, I think that's the point in the film where I was like, no, this is... You've built so much tension and anxiety, especially f- for me. It really, really clicked. And then as soon as he kind of walk- <laughs> crawls in the window and he makes himself... He's like, yeah, 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 I'm the doctor that everyone's trying to find. And his performance is very, very awkward. And it doesn't fit, I don't think. Yeah. No, I completely I agree. Completely agree. Yeah, 100% agree. But yeah, Anything I'm, else? I'm ready um, to go into ratings if you guys are. Yeah, I'm yeah. good to go for ratings. Yeah. Cool. Okay, Ollie, do you want to you wanna start us off your movie? Yeah, so... Um... Second watch, Ponty Paul is for me. Um, I love the concept. I love the whole um, Wells, awesome Wells, War of the Wells, where everything's just one location of uh, Grand Massey trying to explain and trying to figure out what's actually going on on the outside. Grand Massey is a fantastic character. I loved his character. I loved the the producer character in this as well. Um, Two thirds of this movie is great. It's anxiety building, storytelling is fantastic. Um, but as soon as the Doctor comes into this movie, it's where it kind of loses you a little bit. Um, and in the end, it kind of affects the whole end, like the story as a whole. Um, so it's worth a watch. It's definitely worth a watch. Um, oh, but I would probably rate it about three stars in the end. Fair enough. Uh, fair, fair. Um, do you want me to go next? Yeah, can do. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely, I quite agree with Ollie a lot. I do think, yeah, Grant Mazzy, excellent character, awesome performance. I liked, I liked the main sort of three characters. I liked um, the characters they were talking on the phone. I, I think they had, they could have made if they would have just kept that first half and replicated that into the second half uh, and just kept it that sort of funny, simple, but also tense. Uh, I think you're looking at a uh, uh, four, four and a half, but because of some of the choices, I've gone with three stars. Yeah. It's just that last 20 minutes. Kind yeah. of just kills the rest of the movie. It's, it's that last... Insane. It's just that, it's, that final it's... act that a yeah. lot of films kind of suffer, suffer with. Yeah. The first half, the only problem I had was I wasn't sure about his storyline. I was a bit confused with that. I didn't think it was explained too well. But other than that, I loved it. I loved it other than that bit. The second half, there wasn't much I liked about it, which yeah. dropped it massively. Mm. Definitely. Um. So I think this was I think you guys watched this film first and uh I kind of put it off because I was I don't know something about it I was like I don't think I'm going to enjoy this film just from like looking at it and um and even when I first started it like when he's driving and that scene but when when the ball was rolling oh I was like so invested in this film I think that's why I clicked with it so much and I didn't really think too much about the whole spreading of the disease. I was just so invested in these characters and kind of where the storyline was going to go. Um, and yeah, I absolutely loved like kind of the intro to middle section, um, but just kind of like loses it at the end with a bit of a silly ending, to be honest. Um yeah performance wise i've and premise wise i thought it was so interesting and definitely something that i'd return to which is quite rare for me um mm. so yeah other than the lackluster ending i gave it a three and a half out of five just solely for like personal enjoyment fair I, that's a fair review to be fair. i like i like to see the sort of anxiety of going into the film thinking ah I don't fancy this. I don't think it's going to be good to actually be in the highest rating like yeah. on it. So yeah, that's uh, that's really interesting, and I like yeah, that's that's the that's the fun of this podcast. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, it's cool. three, three different sort of movies, really, even though they were three siege movies. They yeah. all kind of tackle different sort of concepts. So, yeah, it, it, it was a good uh, good episode this week to, uh, oh, to watch, yeah. out, watch some of these movies. I think all three, there was so... M- I could talk about all three of those for a long time. I yeah. think all three had... Definitely. They had really, really strong things about them. And um, they also had things that really let them down. Mm. Including, even though I gave a sort of precinct uh, uh, four, uh, we've said like there was a lot, there was one or two big things that dropped it a bit, you know? So, definitely three films, 100% worth watching, I think. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I think uh, so far, this is probably the most consistent out of yeah. all the episodes we've done we've always had one that's kind of dropped the ball so far i think if i remember yeah. correctly but i think all three of the, these films have some really going for them are just a few things that let them down yeah especially especially splinter even though when i finished watching that i was so angry just thinking back about it there was so much i really loved about that movie as well which is such a shame of how they kind of drop the ball on the camera work um but you know, this week's three choices movies have been really enjoyable to watch. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Anyway, I think we'll call it there. Yeah, it's probably going to be a bit of a longer one, I imagine. Yeah. Um, but that's fine. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, all that jazz. Subscribe if you want to. Um, we all appreciate it here. Um but yeah, no, really, really enjoyed doing that one. Thank you, everybody. And um, I don't think we've even discussed next episode, have we? No, we need to get need to get decided. Uh, well, that would be a surprise for you listeners. Um, but this has been a uh, Grant Mazzy. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, see you guys later. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you bye bye. Bye. Bye.